Let's not miss that light. Quick shifter, baby. <laughs> I'm loving that thing so much. If you missed that video, uh, the last one that I put out where I installed it and then went riding with it for the first time. Freaking amazing. Oh, I can't tell you guys how much I am loving my freaking new R6 2017 in Yamaha Blue. Let's just move on over. I was gonna pick up an energy drink before this vlog, but uh, oh, hello. Sorry about that, my bad. Want a little bit of a pick me up. I don't know, I was super, super tired today. Probably had to do a little bit with the uh, fact that I had two lunches. Oh, we're gonna get on the highway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how's that for a daily 100? We're, we're not gonna do a, <laughs> this isn't a highway vlog. We're gonna get off. There's a, a road that I'm just gonna do a little, quick little ride on because we're gonna do a moto vlog today. I got a topic for you guys. And uh, I, I know it's something that a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about since I got this bike. Because of the fact that I now have both a 600 and a 1000cc motorcycle at the same time. Hopefully the lighting doesn't get bad. I decided to chance it and use my daytime GoPro settings rather than my uh, dusk or nighttime settings. Oh yeah. There we go. That's what I want to take. Hero Way, aka 2243, aka Nameless Road, aka... I don't think it has another name. I think those are all of them. There might be one more. Give me the green light. Don't change me. Downshift. 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 And screw Knee drag. Not really. Quick shifter. Quick shifter. Quick shifter. <laughs> I love that thing so much. It's so nice. Ah. I'm feeling so good tonight, guys. That's what I was gonna say. Like, I, I was gonna get an energy drink and then I got out on the bike and it just, uh, it gave me all the energy that I needed. I don't need a freaking energy drink getting on this thing. I, I love it. I can't tell you how much, like, I mean, I can tell you. I'm telling you right now. I love it a lot, okay? That's how much I like it. God, why are you getting on my case tonight, guys? Ah. But no, like, I'm so excited for this. And it's probably, like, a lot of just novelty. I really am just excited for a new bike. But this bike... It's, pre it's pretty awesome, not, not gonna lie. You know, I, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I would never do that. Oh, you know what? No wonder that road didn't look all that familiar because I was not supposed to turn on it. <laughs> Wait, no, maybe I was. What road is this? Um, now I'm confused. I think that's the road that I want. It is, okay, so that's 2243 that way. I don't know, I'm, I'm very confused. Maybe I'm learning new things. That's so weird. 2243 going that way back there. 2243 going this way up here. <sighs> Messing with my brain, guys. Oh, that's me. We're going left. Green light. Oh, hello. What the heck? What? What kind of freaking lane setup is that? Hello, HEB. Best grocery store on earth. Yeah, you right there. <laughs> Something's gotten into me tonight. You know what? You know what's gotten into me? freaking motorcycle <laughs> if you know so we got a topic for you guys today 600 versus 1000 cc motorcycles and uh yeah i've made i've made vlogs in the past talking about 1000 cc bikes aka leader bikes and that's leader as in l-i-t-e-r a unit of measurement now you americans may not be as familiar with leader you also may not be as familiar with cc's but you know here we are and uh yeah i've made a couple vlogs in the past i'll link those down in the description and uh, if you're too lazy to scroll down and you just want to click that little i way up there in the top right of the screen but we're going to talk about this again because i'm freshly on an r6 whereas before i was going from a 600 to a 1000 so i i used to have an r6 and then i got an r1 i'm keeping the r1 but i picked up an r6 and uh you know the, the setup for this story 
<laughs> story time. 600 cc versus 1000 cc. The time that I died. Story time. Hashtag. But it's a little bit different this time because the freshest motorcycle in my mind and the the one that I rode most recently. You know, the the one the one that's underneath my butt right now. The R6, the 600. So uh, maybe my mindset will be a little bit different, but I think my thoughts will be relatively the same. So I will start off this video and what, man, freaking so much construction. Look at all this dirt. My freaking nose getting all tickled by my microphone cover. Woo. I think I've opened and closed my visor like a thousand times already. How long is this vlog already and I haven't even gotten to the dang topic? I apologize. Start off this story with a, a proclaimer. Not a proclaimer? Disclaimer. I do not recommend 600s or 1000 liter, 1000 liters, 600 cc or 1000 cc bikes for beginners. If you are just starting out riding, even if you've ridden dirt bikes and you're just starting out on the road, you know, obviously I have no control of you. Uh, you. You can make your own decision. In the US, you know, you kind of got it made because you can pretty much get whatever bike you want. You got no restrictions like they do in other countries where it makes more sense and they make you start on like a 125, but I can't control you. But I would strongly encourage you to heed my warning and not start on a 600 or 1000. But Motonacity, I started on a 600 and I'm a pro racer now. What's up guys? I'm just gonna have to get stuck behind this guy, aren't I? You're kicking up a lot of rocks into me, buddy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend starting on a 600 or 1000, AKA a uh, super sport because they're, they're not easy bikes to start on. One, they're very powerful. Like you can say, but I'm very responsible. I will take my time in learning how to ride this thing. If you're in the mindset that you would even consider getting a 600 or 1000, you're probably the type that really likes speed. And so, uh, yeah, you're, you're gonna wanna, you know, hit that throttle a little every once in a while, even if you're not ready for it. And it's so much easier to get yourself in a bad position on a 600 or 1000 cc bike when, when you don't mean to. And until you have that road going experience, and that's why I give this qualifier of like, if, you, if you've ridden dirt bikes before, you probably still shouldn't either because you haven't really ridden on the street. It's different because you have to deal with other people. It's not just yourself. You're dealing with everyone else on the road and you have to think about everyone else on the road and what stupid decisions they're gonna make. But this is not a vlog about which bike you should start on, ex except maybe a little bit. I just wanted to leave that disclaimer. You probably shouldn't because no matter how much you say you're not gonna, you know, twist the throttle a little bit, which you, you probably are, and if you're not going to, then why do you even need it, you know? And, and I went on this like long Twitter rant um, a, few, a few weeks back about this. Uh, one of the things that I said, one of the biggest reasons people say, well, I wanna start on a 600 because it's a waste of time and money to start on something smaller because I'm just gonna get sick of it real quick. I started on an SV650, not a 600 class motorcycle, way, way, way less power, but great beginner bikes kind of a nice balance between, you know, not too powerful and uh, not gonna get bored with it on day one. I sold that thing for more than I bought it for after putting like 7,000 miles on it uh, and keeping it for a year and a half, I sold it for more than I bought it for. It's not that hard to buy a used bike and sell it for more than you bought it for. Just putting that out there. Now that we have that disclaimer out of the way, differences between the 600 or 1000 and which one you should buy. So let's go into this thinking that you already have ridden motorcycles. Maybe you started on a 300, maybe you started on a 650. Whatever you started on, you're thinking about getting a super sport and you wanna know which one to get. Nothing is better than getting on both bikes and seeing which one you like best. One of the points that I made in one of my past videos was that a, a 1000 is actually not a whole lot different from a 600. And I stand by that statement. I really don't think that they are. They both feel about the same in how you sit. They're both pretty aggressive seating styles. Um, they have similar power. And obviously a leader bike is gonna have far, far more power. But the thing is a lot of bikes now have modes. So like the old R6 does not, but a lot of leader bikes have. Yamaha's R1 started having modes back in 2009, uh, which is the R1 that I have. So you can put it into conservative mode, which is B mode. So you always can tone down the aggressiveness of the bike. Now, obviously that's not the case for every single super sport, but 
for a lot of them it is. But let's get back to comparing these things. What are the main differences between a 600 and a Super Sport? Well, the main difference that you're gonna feel, and I know some people have said that the whole conception about leader bikes being so much heavier than 600s needs to stop. I don't really understand that because there is a substantial weight difference. Even when you're only talking about, you know, 25, 30 pounds for the difference between the new R6 and the new R1, which is a lot less than it was between my R1 and the R6, which is more along the lines of 60 pounds of difference. You're, you're still gonna feel that on the road. When you start throwing this bike into turns, it is a lot easier to manage the 600 than it is the R1, which is one of the things I talked about in my video about why I got the R6. It's a lot easier to just enjoy being on the R6 in some situations because you don't have to really manhandle the bike. It's, you know, it, it really just allows you to toss it around, which makes it a little bit easier for someone who hasn't ridden a super sport before to get comfortable uh, riding that kind of bike. So we got weight. I think it's a, a, a big difference, but when, when it comes to deciding which bike to get, you can't just say, oh, well, I want to get the lighter bike because that's better. Because in some ways, it's nicer to have the heavier bike. If you're going to be doing a lot of commuting on your bike, it's nice to have the heavier one because on the highway, you're not getting tossed around by other cars, by, other, by the wind off of other cars, um, off of semis. Oh my God, you, get, you really get thrown around on a 600 sometimes from semis for when you do want to get up there in the speeds. The 600 is really, really, really... Uh, I wouldn't say unstable. My R1 just freaking plows through the air even at 150. This is a, a little a little bit wobbly. There's less weight for that wind to throw around and you just don't dart through it like you do on a heavier bike. You know, this is something that I've th said before, but the leader bikes just feel more planted when you're just cruising around. It makes it a little bit more comfortable to ride. But it, like, it's weird. There, there's so many different like counterbalances on different points for one versus the other. Cause I say, you know, it's very planted, but then the lightness of the 600 makes that comfortable in situations as well. You gotta figure out what kind of riding you do to better figure out which bike is good for you. Aside from power, which obviously leader bikes are gonna have way, way, way more power. They also have more torque. It makes it a lot easier to operate at lower RPMs than on a 600. You know, I can start my R1 in sixth gear from a stop uh, and pretty easily get it up to speed, no problem. Yeah, I can dink around in slow traffic on the R1 and it's not really an issue because it's got the torque to operate at that low RPM. So in that way, it's kind of weird, but I feel the leader bike is easier for a beginner to ride. Another area that a lot of people kind of ask questions about is size. You know, is, is a leader bike better for someone who's large or tall? In some situations, yes, the leader bike is, but not all leader bikes. I haven't ridden a CBR 1000, but I've sat on them and they're, they're much shorter and feel shorter than this R6. So it's not a, you know, set in stone, all 1000s feel larger and all 600s feel smaller. You're gonna have to sit on them and make sure that they feel comfortable to you, which is why I say go to a dealer and just ride the bikes. In general, it's easier easier for someone to fit on a 600. But then again, I'm 6'2", and I feel completely fine on the R6. It honestly feels really, really nice. Let's move on to price. It's in the range of a 20 to 40% increase in cost for the leader bike, just outright, for what you're buying on the spot. I remember when I was looking at these, it was, you know, between eight and 10 for the R1s and the R6s of the same year were more along the lines of, oh, six to seven. But for the technology, you can usually get away with getting an older leader bike to have the same exact features as a newer 600. So then the cost becomes a little bit closer. This bike is a 2017, but the technology in this bike was in the R1 starting in 2012, five years ago. So if you wanted to have the same exact technology, you could get a 2012 R1 versus a 2017 R6. So uh, I think I've kind of covered the main points and main questions that people have about 600 versus 1000s and which one they should get. To summarize a little bit, 1000s, they're gonna feel a little bit heavier, which is gonna be, you know, a little bit of a hassle in some situations, like if you're doing a lot of riding in twisties and things like that. 
Um, but it's going to be a little bit nicer if you're going to be cruising a lot more on the highway. The 600 is lighter, so you're going to get thrown around a little bit on the highways. Not a whole lot, like I don't want to like blow it out of proportion, but it's noticeable. But it's going to be a lot easier to just control the bike and have a lot of fun with it. Don't think that there's not room for improvement, like you're going to somehow like reach the uh, edge of abilities on a 600 and need to upgrade to a 1000. I'd say a lot of people don't even ever upgrade to 1000, which is why I kind of don't understand the point of like, well, 1000 is way too much for the street. Because by the same argument, like a 600 could be way too much for the street. And in some situations, a 1000 is too much for the track. You know, I ride Coda. The track closest to me is Circuit of the Americas, the F1 track. It is massive. And an R1, a leader bike, fits that track well because you're actually able to get that thing up to speed. But on a lot of tracks, they're smaller. And a 600 just works better. I never really take the uh, whole 1000s are too much for the street argument uh, very seriously because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you're gonna get trouble on 1000, you're gonna get in trouble on a 600. They're both very fast bikes. And a lot of the things about a leader bike, I think actually make it easier to ride on the street. <laughs> a lot of people who make the argument that a 1000 is too much for the street, have never owned a 1000 and ridden it on the street. But at the end of the day, I just gotta encourage you to go to a dealership and ride a lot of 600s and a lot of 1000s from different manufacturers. Get a feel for them, try to figure out how they're gonna feel on the road for the type of riding that you wanna do. It's the same situation for someone who's never ridden a motorcycle before and is trying to find their first bike. You just gotta ride them. So guys, I hope that helps you out a little bit if you're trying to decide between a 600 or 1000.